So you built yourself a forge, and that's great. Welcome to the community. So let's give them a look. Oh my gosh, what is this? Now don't get me wrong, KOL is great. It's cheap, it's easy to work with, and it's an excellent refractory material. But it has the side effect that in a forge, it sometimes releases microfibers. And these said microfibers, if breathed in, can cause life-altering diseases. So that's what I'm here to teach you about. So uh, your new hobby doesn't kill you. The two main ailments potentially linked to KO wool are silicosis, which is permanent scarring of the lungs, and cancer. KO wool is made entirely of, or mainly of silica and alumina, which according to the MSDS by KO wool, the evidence as to KO wool causing these two diseases is not entirely conclusive. However, from everything I've read, that statement stands at room temperature. That, that doesn't take into account the high temperature chemistry that occurs within a forge. So why take that risk of, of acquiring these terrible diseases and end up in a mesothelioma commercial in 30 years? Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't talk right now. I'm, I'm filming a cancer prevention commercial, so I'll, I'll call you back, all right? Bro, you got a light. Oh. Dude, are you still filming? So I'm gonna show you how I coat my forge. So to start, you're going to want to pick up some of this KO Wool Rigidizer. I got it on Amazon for like $15 or something like that. Um, and you mix it into one-to-one -one ratio in water. It makes the KO Wool less fabric-like and more solid. To start, spray down the KO Wool with uh, water. Then with your one-to-one -one ratio of Rigidizer and water, spray it down until the KO Wool looks pink. Uh, it looks a lot more pink in person. The camera didn't pick it up. And then I just dumped the rest of it on so you can see it there. Once you got the KO wool nice and saturated, you're just gonna fire up your forge and burn off all the water and it'll when you're done, let it cool and it'll be a solid material. Now I did a little digging and it seems to be the consensus on the forging uh, Reddit forums that Castolite or perhaps ITC100 would be the best refractory cement to line your forge with. I found my five pound bag of uh, Castolite on irondungeonforge.com, not a sponsorship, I just thought it was kind of hard to find, a, find the stuff, so there you go. Now once you've got your Castolite, you're going to want to slowly add water to it until it becomes a consistency to which you can kind of make a ball out of it and toss it in the air without it falling apart. If you add too much water though, you can ruin the mixture, so be careful. Now I'm only coating my forge lid with the Castolite because I don't have a whole lot of room in my forge and you need your layer to be about a quarter of an inch thick but you'll see what I do with the rest of my forge here in a minute. Now for the rest of the forge I bought this cheap refractory cement from Menards and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add water to it until it's about the consistency perhaps a little thicker than paint. Then you're just going to take an old paintbrush and paint it on the interior of your forge. Now I don't know exactly how long this will last in my forge, um, it's a pretty cheap material so I will keep you guys updated as to how long it lasts. If it, it just crumbles after a couple of heatings, I'll probably end up taking the uh, dirtiest layer of the KO wool out and replace it entirely with Castolite. Then after that you're just going to want to let it dry overnight and do a low temperature heating to start and you're ready to rock then. And just a quick side note, you can potentially substitute KO wool with a biosoluble uh, ceramic blanket, but they can be hard to find and really expensive, so just an idea. Forging is a great hobby, and I just don't want to see anyone getting hurt, so do it safely.